Yo, thanks for checking out this video. This is the second part for the second devlog for our game Project ZB. It's our single player arena shooter that fully embraces the source quake air strafe movement into the combat loop. The first one was about the game aesthetic and how we made aggressive combat consistent and rewarding. Link is in the description. For this one, we're excited to show you this new mapping tool we found and our mapping process is a hundred times faster with it. Alright, enjoy. I was telling Cosmic Griffin, bro, level design was gonna be, oh my gosh, it's gonna be freaking bad, like I was scared to do it. However, good news, the map shown in the background here for the gameplay, it's it's called Brutal Skies mm. because we wanted brutal architecture inside a skyscraper, wow. We managed to pack in over 15 minutes of gameplay. This map was what we were cooking up since the first devlog. This was the map that's been helping us balance the game and create all the map world event system that facilitates the gameplay. So buckle up, I'm gonna tell you how we got here. And oh my gosh, it has a lot of drama. So after devlog 1 with the arena, we split it up to experiment and create maps of our own since beside one arena, we didn't really know what was even good for the game. So our Hauntex created a map with a focus on more incidental combat. Think of OG Doom or Quake, where you aren't required to kill all enemies in a level to proceed. Whereas I made a couple of maps that had a more arena focus to them, kind of like Ultra Kill. At some point, we decided that the maps we were making were not up to par with the quality we would expect of a map for this game. We ditched our maps and opted to build one together instead, beginning with a brainstorm on a whiteboard with just three cubes drawn with a rough idea of the route the player would take, as well as the goals of the map. Going into Unity, we began with blocking out the courtyard in the three buildings, and we started with the middle building first. Design of the areas and map making was slow because it required a lot of forethought due to the way Pro Builder works, especially with nav mission. But then, Zarhontix found something that would change our design process forever. Alright, alright. First off, huh? Unity is trolling for not investing in this, okay? The dev that made this tool worked at Unity before. His GDC talk was so crazy. But Unity rather invest in ways of milking money. Anyways, the tool is called Real Time CSG by Logical Error. Look at this. It lets you place down brushes and then boolean, boolean, boolean. It makes the meshes for you. Pro Builder requires so much forethought. All the topology, you have to manage all that. I know good Do devs be using Trench Boom to build the map and then importing it. Even if that worked in Unity, it would still be too slow. So, oh my gosh, the night that I found out about real-time CSG, I could not sleep from excitement. There were so many thoughts like, oh my gosh, I can do this, I can do that. It's, like the, it's so flexible, it's so fast. We are literally using Trench Boom at this point, doing quick map modding now inside Unity. Like, come on. Like, look at this. I made this in like, I don't know, 30 minutes or something. It's like some dumb building. Doing this in Probator would take... I don't even know. I don't even know. But, of course it's a but. Real-time CSG isn't updated in quite a while now, and there are still many bugs. Even though the community forked and tried to update and fix things, there's still one issue playing the whole tool. Issue number 375. Geometry is generated in a way that causes non number issues for shaders using normal maps. Specifically, the tool was writing NANs into the tangent space of the mesh. Our Uber shader, which uses normal maps plus the light map directionality data, spread NANs all over the screen. When I found this out, it kept me up another night. At first, I didn't even know the issue. Like, I just kept seeing blotches of flickering black goobity gop I was able to fix it by manually finding it manually opening up the mesh deleting the face then putting it back uncovering the face was like staring right into the abyss but I wasn't taking no for an answer I knew this tool was gonna be the biggest time saver in the level design process entry team to talk we need the big guns first Export the CSG mesh. Oh. Then, pro it. Oh. Using the pro API, oh. O of N, each face, and delete 
all faces with an area of zero. And also wield any vertices close to each other. And that was it. Removing those spaces and wielding close vertices together not only stops the visual artifact, but it also helps optimization, cutting down on useless faces. So yeah, you wouldn't know how relieved that was. Real time CSG plus Pro Builder is goaded. As the level grew in length and time to complete, we decided that the game needed a checkpoint system. It would have been punishing gameplay, but that was too limiting for what we wanted to do with the current map and future ones to come. Any dynamic object that has a tie into our world event system doesn't care about anything else other than itself. And it works simply by saving what its current state is when passing a checkpoint and reverting to it when loading one. No dependencies is the best way to go. For our arenas that handle the enemies, our solution involved cloning the arena in its entirety during runtime. This also helps us in level design so we don't have to like prepare like prefabs or whatever to instantiate. It's all the cloning, it handles itself. You just make one instance in the editor and don't care about it. All right, this is gonna be a bit of a sidetrack. The game in the background right now is a game by Cosmic Griffin called Runner. He made this four years ago. It's a 3D platformer. You have to get to the end as fast as possible. And uh, on a boring afternoon for a gag. Yup, it's gonna be a level in our game now. I used this program called a uh, U-Tiny Ripper. I ripped each scene out and since he used Pro Builder, easy Pro Builder rise. This first arena right here is my favorite. You have this flamer guarding the bridge. You cannot get close to him, you have to circle straight. These two toxic dudes on the vantage point fills up the arena with spit. Oh yeah, and look at this. <laughs> this map doesn't mean we're gonna cobble up some one tone sky island and call it a day. I think it only affirms that uh, we're, we're probably on to some really good gameplay combat loop. Since even just a bit of obstacle placed around, the enemies can still force you to make interesting combat decisions. Here are some other maps that we were working on. This desert scene here, the terrain uses map magic, but it's this wall right here inside it, this is the room. This was using Pro Builder, it's probably unsymmetrical and it took 10 years to build. Oh, look at this one. I thought like Aztec theme with like, oh my gosh, this slopes, this slant structure is gonna be like cool surf ramps. This was using, I think, U Modeler X, you know, same workflow as Pro Builder, took 10 years too. Yeah, this one, Cosmic Griffin built this map. This jungle gym room right here, it went over many changes. Each time this man went to change it, it took him forever. The walls were used to be like far back, now they're in close the arena. And to change that, he basically had to rebuild the whole room to get the walls in the correct spot. This top ring right here, if we had the CSG tool earlier, it would have been made in two brushes. So yeah, in reflection, we have the level scripting framework. We probably have the fastest level building tool in Unity. So the time to start pumping out the maps is gonna be really soon. All right, thanks for sticking all the way to the end. Down in the description will be a link to my GitHub. It will have the face deleting script for those who wanna use real-time CSG plus Pro Builder. If you guys have suggestions for the game, leave it below in the comments. We really do read them. Part 1 of the devlog went over how we responded to the previous devlog's comments. We also have a discord, so join it, leave your suggestions in there too. We want to have a steam page to be in some steam fests. So hopefully a demo will be out by May or before. So yeah, thanks for watching and we're really eager to get the demo out for you guys to play.